Lewis structures are a way of visually representing the covalent bonding in different molecules or molecular ions. Drawing these structures is easy if you follow a simple series of rules. The first rule is to take your molecule or molecular ion and add up all of the valence electrons for all of the atoms within that molecule. We will use CH4, methane, as our example molecule. Carbon has four valence electrons, and each of the four hydrogen atoms has one valence electrons for a total of eight valence shell electrons. If we had a molecular ion, we would simply add electrons for anions and subtract electrons for cations. So if we had CH4 2 minus, we would have 10 valence shell electrons. If we had CH4 plus, we would have seven valence shell electrons. The second rule is to connect all of the atoms with single bonds. So we connect our atoms with single bonds, and typically we do this by placing the most electronegative atoms on the outside and the least electronegative atom on the inside. In cases where you're unsure, or in cases with hydrogen especially, it can be easy. Hydrogen can only make one bond because it only has one orbital possible. That means it has to go on the outside. It can't have more than one bond to it. So in a case with two types of atoms, in this case carbon and hydrogen, carbon has to be in the center and hydrogen has to be on the outside. So here we have carbon in the center, the hydrogen's arranged around it, and the atoms are connected with single bonds. So that was a simple example. A more complicated example is something like PCL3, phosphorus trichloride. In the phosphorus trichloride molecule, we have three chlorines, each with seven electrons in the valence shell, and we have phosphorus, which has five electrons in the valence shell. So we have 21 plus five for a total of 26 valence shell electrons. We connect our atoms with our single bonds. So we put phosphorus in the center and the very electronegative chlorines on the outside. We connect everything with single bonds. And the third step is complete the octets of the outer atoms. So we complete the octets of our outer atoms, and what this means is we place electrons around the outer atoms, just like when we were making our Lewis symbols. So currently we have three bonds. Each bond contains two electrons. So we've used a total of six electrons. So now we have 20 valence shell electrons left to use, and we want to make octets around our outer atoms, around our chlorine atoms. And what we do is we say chlorine, each chlorine is bonded the same way, so each chlorine has two atoms around it. And then we add one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around each of the chlorines to give each chlorine eight electrons, or an octet. And now we've got 24 electrons. So we've used another 18 electrons. Now we have a total of two electrons remaining. If you ever end up in a situation like this where you've used up all the electrons in the outer atoms and they can't hold any more electrons, then you have to place those electrons around the central atom. Step four. So now we have to do our fourth step, which is placing the remaining electrons around the central atom. We have two electrons remaining. We place them around the phosphorus. And now we've used up all of our 26 valence shell electrons. And we have a situation where each atom has eight electrons around it. The chlorines each have eight electrons, six from the lone pairs, two from the bond. Each of the chlorines has a satisfied octet. And if we consider the phosphorus, it has a satisfied octet as well. It has six electrons from the bonds, and it has two electrons from the lone pair for a total of eight. So now we have a satisfied octet on each atom. We have a good Lewis structure. We can also have more complicated examples. Consider the case of CO2, or carbon dioxide, which has, which has 16 valence shell electrons. Six from each of the oxygens for a total of 12, plus four from the carbon giving you 16. We connect our atoms with single bonds. Oxygens, being more electronegative, go on the outside. And then we connect with single bonds. And then we complete the octets of our outer atoms. So now we have 12 electrons around our oxygens, plus two in each of the single bonds for a total of 16 valence shell electrons. So now we have zero electrons remaining. Unfortunately, 
not all of our atoms have a full octet. The oxygens are okay. They have six electrons from the lone pairs, two electrons from the bond, so they each have eight electrons. The carbon, however, only has four electrons associated with it through the bonds. And a good Lewis structure satisfies an octet whenever possible. And it is possible to satisfy all the octets by making multiple bonds here. So we can make multiple bonds using the lone pair electrons on each oxygen. What we can do is we can say one of these lone pairs, it doesn't matter which one, moves in. And one of these lone pairs, again, it doesn't matter, moves in. So we have a slightly different situation now. So now each of the atoms has a satisfied full octet. If you look at each individual oxygen atom, they all have eight electrons. Two from the lone pair, two from the lone pair, two from part of the double bond, and two from the other part of the double bond. The carbon also has eight electrons. There are four bonds around it, each containing two electrons for a total of eight.